superhero. This is the place where the magic happens, and this is where everybody should be right now. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. It's amazing to have you here. Um, ben and I, I know Ben's already been pitching a bit, but the thing that we're going to talk about is tools, payloads, and why you shouldn't spray and pray. Yeah, it's actually that. Spray and pray is. The display, yeah, the, the pray and spray thing kind of bothers me. I see a lot of hackers asking more for payloads than asking why these payloads work. So I figured yeah. we'll dedicate some time to talk about it. Talk about tools um, or even tooling in general. Um, so I'll let you kick it off because I know you have your own opinions. So to be clear, you and I kind of stand on different sides of the payload thing. We do. Uh, so we can let's start with the payload thing. And uh, what we mean by payload is... Um, Anything that you pretty much copy paste that is supposed to result in something and you copy paste it and it doesn't work, but you don't know why. And sometimes it works. You don't know why. And sometimes it's in the middle. You put it in the wrong place and not, it might not fire. And that's why using payloads becomes a little bit um, redundant and not as efficient, right? That, that is true. But then again, you know, um, <laughs> I'm a fusser. I love to fuss things until they break. So, it's, so for me, running like payloads until I see a lot of 500s or, or you know get stack overflows or anything, it's I, I like it. So, but when it comes to you know if you're using Burp and you and you just you you browse to walk the website, you you spider it, you have all these URLs here. You just don't control A check everything in the scanner and says do active scan because right. shit's just gonna fucking burn if you do that and and it's, it's not a good thing because you're probably gonna get 429 right like right. you're gonna get blocked or you will end up with some kind of WAF or you will end up with something that's gonna stop you so you want to do the stealth thing so we were talking about payloads we we're talking about let's say file upload payloads that's I, I got a couple of PDF files. We talked about this last time, where I've put XML information or, or external entities inside my PDF uh, payloads, and I use those regularly. So, yeah, I, mean, you know that, though. I think this is where you and I sign on different points. Like, I don't have a problem with using payloads. If you've made a payload, you know what it does, right? Let's say for XXC, you know you have a payload, yeah. goes to an external entity, pulls the entity of the file, the DDT file. And then pulls a you know remote it, 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 it reads a file internally sends it back to your UI right you know what that payload does my yes. problem my, or what I call my beef is that what's up Luke I see you with your rock hands uh, my beef is that hackers go copy paste payloads and like XSX is the biggest one they don't know what the payload does you know I see people in forums asking hey how do I do this and people just repost a similar payload to what they have used. When it would do the same thing, it's just a different HTML tag. And people think that might work because, you know, image tag didn't work. Maybe if I do video source, it might work, right? That is my problem with people that use payloads. Is, and that's something I have dealt with, you know, five, six years ago when I first started in the bug bounty scene, because I wanted to learn so fast, I relied on payloads. I would copy paste payloads, it pops up. Oh, cool, I found a bug, right? Then I realized I was missing some bugs. Like an image tag isn't going to work in a script tag, right? So if you don't know what the the payload is supposed to do you're kind of missing out on bugs you're just relying on you're hoping that payload works you know as donuts putting it when you use payload without knowing what it does um if you're, yeah exactly like you don't know what it does you don't know what to expect you're just waiting on the um, actual payload to fire and you're hoping that it would fire if it doesn't fire if it's blocked by a csp for example you never catch on to those right yeah and, and 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 that's the thing you know there are things you can automate of course and and uh, you know the main reason why you do have burp scanner is for because you you don't need to manually you don't want to type it all in all over again right so and and uh and same comes with the word list or brute forcing or intruder or whatever you do uh even though you have a couple of payloads and you bring and they bring all the bugs to the yard it it, it doesn't work everywhere it's like if you're if you're trying to run a lot of php payload on an asp or uh or just simple iis server it's not gonna work and you're just wasting resources and time yeah i think there's a time and a place um i think this was someone on bug bounty forum under our post somebody said there's a time and a place i think it was justin kennedy shout out to him if it was him um he said, like 
there is a time and a place for a payload. If you know that, you know, if you're dealing with a WAF, for example, right? You want to try 20 different payloads, cool. Throw it out there and see which one works because you don't want to make your own. But even then, if you don't understand how the WAF is working, your payloads might not work because you don't know how to, you don't know what you're dealing with, right? No. Um, that's my biggest problem. I use payloads, like I have, you know, like I use the, uh, what is it called? The XSS Hunter. I use the payload from that. It's copied in my clipboard. I just go copy and paste it every time. I have a, my own payload built around it. Uh, XXC, same thing. I have my own payload. It's not so much that I rely on the payload. I just have it there so I don't have to sit down and rewrite it every single time when I want to look and uh, find a bug um, like XXC or XSS. So if I know where the payload goes, where it's used for, then I definitely would rely on it. But I don't think that's the case with a lot of our hackers, right? There's different things, and if, if I was watching this uh, Agents of Shield last night, and uh, this really horrible Nazi overlord that's running Hydra, he, he says that experimenting is the progress of success or something like really nasty. But I think that's the thing, and that's why I love fussing. You know, I fuss things until they die and when they die i take them apart and, and i wonder why and then i do it over again but that's just the way i like to do it and there's a different approach for everything but if it's somebody else's server that you want to stuff with stuff it's going to eventually die because the, because the logs are going to get fooled or whatever ask nafi he's taking it down a couple of boxes that way yeah i mean again it comes down to knowing what you want to do and knowing how much that box can handle right if you know this box is if you're doing a directory brute force and you see the site is responding to you a little bit slower than usual, it's a good sign, right? <laughs> that is the truth. And, uh, but then again, you know, uh, and there's also another thing that I want to talk about. If, you, if you're going to do payload spray and if you want to use like a collaborator everywhere or any other kind of like tool set that's sends a request somewhere else and it's going to end up in the system. And if, if you do using Burp and Burp Collaborator, um, that, that's an easy way for you to find it. But I suggest that you get your own DNS server, a bind server, or your own uh, um, Burp Collaborator up and running. And that way, if you exfiltrate data and accidentally, it will not end up somewhere else. It will end up in your system and you're going to be able to control it. And that way you're not taking part of any kind of leak or any other stuff. So I would suggest getting your own verb collaborator. Uh, I'm just extremely excited about that because uh, I, I, I was playing around with Putsi the other day uh, about his um, tutorial, how to set it up, which is pretty fucking amazing. And I'm going to, after this 4420 event, I'm, I'm definitely going to do a, a video walkthrough, step by step, how you do it. And, and also incorporate the whole bind DNS thing that I promised that I was supposed to get out, but did, didn't. So, um, and definitely that's something you should look into. Um, do any of you guys out there have any tools that you love to use that we need to discuss? Um, I'll answer that while we wait. I think I only use a handful of tools, to be honest. I use Burp for the obvious reasons. Uh-huh. Um, I usually, I only use, I don't think I even need to buy a Burp license because I don't use anything that Burp comes with. I use a decoder sometimes. I use their repeater and the intruder just to automate some stuff. Um, then I use, outside of Burp, I use directory search, screenshot tools, um, and a bunch of other random things I've written for uh, asset discovery, uh, those different stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But outside of that, I don't, I try, my thing is, uh, and this is something that I used to be on the opposite side was I used to use a lot of tools back in the day, a lot of scanners, you know, active scanners, whatever. Then I realized I'm finding bugs. I'm getting paid, but I'm going to hit a, I'm going to hit a roadblock when I'm not finding bugs with these tools. And that's kind of when I stopped using tools and payloads. I was like, I want to know how I can make money without using Burp suit. I don't have to spend the $300 a year. And I think I went about nine months of not even buying my Burp license for a while, just so I can make sure I don't use it. Yeah, uh, no, that was really helpful. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's your approach. And, and, and hey, you've been in the game for like 4,000 years now. So for you, it's very easy. A dinosaur, man. I'm not a dinosaur. That, 
<laughs> I've got I've got all the lead stuff in my head. I know all the URL parsers. I don't. <laughs> so, so I need Burp uh, and and I need uh, I need AMAS and I need Deerbuster and I need F uh, FFUF and I need the Raft word list combined with everything that I built on on my own to be able to find my attack surface and and uh, to be able to just dig into it. Um, so for me to collect breath, a lot, a lot of stuff, then I just break it down and I spend hours and hours and hours looking through burp, you know. What, actually, you know, I turn everything off, like any passive, any, any kind of information that would be intrusive to anyone in, in, my, in my passive scanner, and then I just leave it on and I browse websites and I'll see what goes through, you know, and just to learn how how websites work and I find APIs and I look through those a bit, not intrusive, just passively just watching how people set things up. Someone mentioned Nmap. Yeah, Nmap is another tool that I use. I don't use it as much as I should, um, yeah. but there's been times when I go and run an Nmap scan, uh, anonymous, undefined is someone who mentioned it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you can use all the tools in the world. It's not about using, to me, it's not about using or not using tools. It's mo if you don't know how to if you don't know how to go through the data that you're you're using your tools for, there's no point of using any tools. That's the biggest thing. People think you know like just because you're using directory uh, brute forcing tools, it doesn't matter how many times we run a directory brute force on the same target. You know I've run maybe uh, directory search. I use DIR search a lot. I probably ran that thing on uh, five of my targets every month for the past two years. Yeah. But if I don't know how to manage that, and I'm not using any database at all, I'm just using my own bash, and I, I'm too lazy to write anything. That's why all my tools are called lazy. Learn to recall. Yeah, and I, I just use grep, man. Like everything is in a text file. It's in the different folders. I just have to grep, grep, grep. Um, so easy. Yeah, I use directory search Python. Um, Python three, I believe. I yep. put it in 200 threads and just let it go with. Uh, I don't even use a big enough worth list. I think I use 45,000 lines. And then I have one that's 400,000 lines that comes out when I really don't find anything at all. Um, okay. and if I get really, really pissed off is when I, you know, add another file to it and have it go at it. Yeah, I think I had a combination between uh, uh, the DICC.txt and, and then I, um, I I did a scan on a system that, that I was controlling. Um, you can actually do this with Burp Collaborator. If, if you have a Burp Collaborator, you can send in, uh, let's say, nmap HTTP enum. If you want to get that word list, and brrr, you got all that, you just grab those, put them in your word list, combine those, and then you have the DICC from, I think it's Deerbuster, right? Uh, right. Combined with the nmap uh, HTTP um, header thingy. And then you take, uh, let's say, the 10,000 robots robots disallowed, put those in there, and you take a selection of the most common backup files. <laughs> and uh, you replace everything that with percent .exe or whatever that you like to have it, and then you run it with FFUF or Gearbuster or whatever. I use that as, as my flyover. If I have if I get a domain, I'll, I'll just you know I'll, I'll bash that for sub in cat whatever thing do Python thingy subdomain and all these strings and I just leave it on. I send it over to my text file, then I tail that file and can always go back to it later looking for whatever thing that I want. Parse that over to um, what web. So so I will also know what kind of information uh, about the web server that I'm running. Then I have that, I'll look that through, I'll look for those old good old F5 big IP load balancers that I do love so much, and, uh, and things that I feel vulnerable. IS servers, basic old ones, that's my favorite, so I go for those. Yeah, um, I see a lot of people mentioning a lot of tool names. Again, like it's not so much about what tool you use. I think they all did a, they do a great job. If you want to use Burp, WFAS, directory search. It's, again, it's not about what tools you use. You know, you just mentioned you use Nmap and you also do an uh, HTTP enum for the directories with the script. You can yeah. use any tool. It just comes down to how you use it. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use. I think people think like there's a magical pro uh, tool that we all use that it's not out there. It's, we're using the same tools as everybody else. It's just I have gotten really comfortable with the way I use the tool and how I configure the tool to do the things I want it to do and where I store it and how I store it is what makes a difference between yeah, yeah. attackers, right? Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, the next question that I saw, if you don't mind, someone asking for a word list and somebody asked about uh, if cyclists is worth it. So I'm going to combine those two into one. Bring it. Uh, so I use cyclists. 
I've gone into Sequest, made three different kinds of files. One is my 40,000 files and you know, the 40,000 line one, I add stuff to it as I'm uh, hacking. So if I hack somewhere, if I get a, you know, if I get a directory, a open directory listing, for example, I see some juicy files and folders that I may not have in my files. I manually go in there and add it to my files. Uh, I think I've added maybe a thousand lines in the past year or so because I'm finding things that are weird and I keep adding to that, right? Uh, so and, you can, is really and you can easily just create yourself an alias of that. You can just do whatever, you know, echo, line, but, uh, tack, tack, and then you send it all into your word list. So you'll just, uh, you'll just write in add in whatever URL you want to. It's going to shut it in there. And you always have it. An easy way for you to get around to the command line. Um, there was a question about recon, recon tips, content, content discovery rather than JS. It's all about, if you're doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, you know, if, you, if you're using the same word list, if you're using, you're using the same tool, the same approach, Ben has this amazing, beautiful graph, a visual graph on, on how you could approach it. But if you follow that to the step, you will end up with only having dupes. So you need to find a way, a creative way for you to look at the targets in, a, in another way. It's all about staying away from the crowd, Follow the crowd in a way and just feed into it, you know, good stuff. But if you want to, if you really want to find the good stuff, do your research. There is an influencer, and I can't remember who this was. I was reading uh, some of his articles and his like videos, and one of his things is stop following uh, what I say or stop looking at what I say, follow what I do. Yeah. So, you know, do what you say, follow in the crowd. Stop going after what everybody else is doing, like saying they're doing, and go after the actions. Look at how they're reporting bugs. Look at their write-ups. Look at their approach. And yeah. implement those into your own uh, way of doing it. Um, we have another really good question. I pinned this one. I'll let you start this off. Uh, how, do you pick a, how do you pick a private program on HackerOne with many invites? So how do you pick what programs you hack on that are private, Stoke? Oh, oh yeah, 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 it's easy. Um, I think I'm losing you, Stoke. I'm not sure if it's... It's raining in Sweden. When it's raining in Sweden on the countryside, internet cuts out. <laughs> and, but the thing is that um, what I do look for is something to fall in love with. You know, I'll, I'll approach the program uh, and I'll see how responsive are they. Uh, have they um, uh, are they quick on their payouts? Is there a lot of change going on? You have this small change thing you can look at and see what happens before. And uh, then I just look at them, before I accept it, I look at the site and I browse through it, see if it's really static or if, if there's something that I will eventually like to spend months on because I need a challenge. For me, it's not just one quick go in and then get out because I'm not that kind of hunter. Yeah, to be able to, for me to show some program, it's gonna be a program that I like. It's simply as that, you know, I, I, if, I, if, if, if it's a program and an application or a, um, a brand that I enjoy, that I know I want to spend hours with, then it's a big chance that I'm going to choose that one. Yeah, um, for me, it's a combination of things. There's a series of bug bounty programs that I always go back to. They're private programs. I've gone to them randomly, support, send them some bugs. I go and revisit their program once in a while, submit bugs to them, done. There's new programs that I, if I get invited to a new program, um, I try to go and look at them because, you know, new programs, you probably find more bugs. And there's also a third one that it's a combination of uh, average per uh, average of triage, the time for triage, average time to bounty, and how big the scope is or how big the application is. The third one is when I'm just doing my random, hey, I want a new program to go hack on. And it's also the challenge of finding a big name corporation. Uh, when Airbnb was private, the reason why I was so, like, attracted to the company was I use their products a lot, right? I love the company, so I wanted to test on it. And I really wanted yeah. to just own this company at some point. And that's mm -hmm. all it was that drove me was, I want to be able to say, you know, I own this. You know, I didn't do it alone. I had a couple of people helping me, big shout out to Zayat, for example. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, we did it. We did it multiple times. <laughs> and it was just the challenge of just saying, it was no longer about the bounty amount. It was no longer about getting the money out of it. It was just to say, hey, I own this company at some point whether I like it or not, like whatever way that was, we did it after three years, two years, whatever that was, yeah. just a challenge of saying we did it. And, um, and, and nowadays when monetization comes into the, uh, to, to the, to the situation, the, the higher the payouts, the most likely I'm also going to be able to look at that. Yep. You know, I, I, uh, 
my time is limited. I can't really waste time on uh, doing a BDP program for the sheer yo-yo saving in the internet. If, if there's a program that has a really high payout, like like Dropbox, for instance. I mean, yeah, if they pay a lot of money, it makes sense, right? There's a couple more. Since we saw it late, there's a couple more. Um, I'll combine these two. Hold on, there's one short question about the SOAP endpoint. Don't know what to do with it. If it's on Amazon and you're going to slash SOAP and it gives you a 200 or a 302, it's just a uh, default on Amazon. It comes with almost all the instances. I don't spend a lot of time in it. Uh, Sazi, I wouldn't waste too much time on it either. Uh, but a question that came in is, I think you would love to answer this question because I like the answer to this when you talk about it, is how much time do you spend to learn things and hunt in a day? Um, I know you have a schedule and I kind of want to talk about your schedule because it's pretty cool how you do it. For sure, absolutely. And I, I try to learn something every day. You know, I, I, I purely use my uh, Twitter account for one purpose. Having an ear towards InfoSec Twitter. That, that's all what it is. You know, if there's some kind of CV coming out or some kind of something that I would know would be a go golden goose bug, I would look into it. That's what I'm using it for. For instance, do you remember when the when the PostScript bug came out with the RSC file upload? Uh, the day that was released it, by Travis, or is it Tarvis? I can't remember his name. Uh, when that came out, I rescheduled each and every meeting I had and, and just locked myself in for 24 hours. Oh, he's gone. Um, there's a question about practicing on labs or real websites and how we learn stuff, new skills or methods to exploit a vulnerability. Honestly, um, my whole thing is I set up a lot of uh, random goals. So if I wanted to learn about SSRF, then I start, I'll try to um, use SSRF to do that. So I'll find SSRF bugs only. Oh, Stuck is back. But set up the goal. What kind of bug you want to learn about and go after it and focus on that one bug type until you find it. It's working now. Private programs. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, learn how much time you spend. Talk about your Thursday routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have something called hashtag Bounty Thursdays. And, and, and I used to work five days a week as this as a cybersecurity advisor for, the, for an IT company called Be More. And um, and when I fell into bounties, I realized that I didn't have enough time to to sort out my bug hunting. You know, it was six o'clock in the evening. I got home. I had to eat, uh, eat some dinner, spend some time with my wife, and then I was supposed to hack for a few hours until it was time for me to get up in the morning again. That didn't work out for me. So I have something defined as Bounty Thursdays, where I get up in the morning, I, I have a shower, I put on coffee, then I do four hours full on bounty hunting. And, and it could be part learning, it could be part experimenting, and then it's lunch, and then I do another set of four hours, and uh, then my wife comes home and I cook her dinner and uh, we talk about stuff. And if I have something pending, maybe I, I, I let a scanner running for a while. Then I go back, hook that for the final parts before I go to bed at eight o'clock. That way I will not get the mind blown experience of not being able to fall asleep due to the fact that I got my arm tingling due to the, due to the bounty fever. Because <laughs> I, I got some cool down time. So I, I can spend some time with, with Sarah and we can just talk about, you know, me being overexcited or what kind of bug I found. And, uh, and we will just slowly pace into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something else that has to do with me not thinking about bounties. Yeah, I have a similar approach. I use my lunches usually at work. Yeah, uh, yeah it's an hour. It's an hour of work sometimes. I can do some read on yeah. or just look on the, the websites. Um, and then when I get off work usually, um, you know, I get off at like five ish and I, you know, I eat dinner around seven, eight, whenever that is, I hack between the two times. And then afterwards I'll go play some video games and play PUBG and cry and do the same thing as Donut is saying, play CSGO and cry. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, how do you overcome days when you don't find any bugs? Dude, there's been a uh, number of times that's happened. Um, I spent two I, I, weeks on this next target, <laughs> two weeks on this next target, every freaking day I spent on Uber. Yeah, two bugs. It's, it's not two. I got two bugs. That's all. I try to limit how much. So I go target by target. Um, recently, I looked at a public program that I can't talk about yet. Once it gets published, we'll have it. But it was mm -hmm. just a public program that I always wanted to hack on. 
I just said, screw it, I want to look at it. And I, I set a time out, I said, between a week to a month. After this time, I'm done. I'm no longer wasting my freaking time. I need to make some money, right? I rely on some of this bounty money. I want to make my goals every month. So once I spend my majority of time on this company and I have other companies in the back, if it's a new program or a program where I know how to find bugs, I go back and forth. Um, and if I don't find anything, sorry, fuck it. <laughs> I go play video games. I go do something yeah. else. I go play video games. I go watch movies. I go, you know, go out, do something that's not hacking, like you said, to get your mind off of uh, bug bounties. Um, but again, I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't, when I was doing bug bounties first, um, I used to work on bug bounties 8 to 8 a.m. to like 11 p.m. every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie and say that I didn't do that at, at one point. But it is a part of the job. It's whatever time you put in in the beginning, the more you're going to get out of it at the end. You have to become comfortable. You have to be good at your own methodology. You have to be experienced. And then that experience only comes with you trying and doing, putting in the hours and having those days when you don't find any bugs, right? Yeah, you need to schedule off time too. You know, you need to schedule times with your friends and your family and, and, and do other stuff. So, you, and, and, you know, in periods when I haven't found anything and I'm like, oh, this fucking sucks. I will never be a great bug hunter. You know, we, we, we. I, I just don't hunt. I just don't hunt. And then a few days goes by and the itch is coming along. And, I, and I'm firing up burp again. And I'm looking at InfoSec Twitter and I'm finding shit. But it's also a mental mindset. I need to prepare myself mentally and say, today is the day I find a great bug. And that it is the mentality. You gotta tell yourself that and believe it. That's exactly right. You have yeah. to tell yourself, I'm going to find this bug on this company yeah. and make it your mission to do it. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it takes longer than most, but hey man, it, it is what it is. It's at the end of the day, you're not just wasting time, you're learning more is what it is. Absolutely. It, it, the question is not, is the bug there? The question is, how much time can you invest to find it? It's going to be a bug there. Um, so we're out of time. I want to end it with one more question. I think this is a, I want to end it on a very good, funny question. And a uh, big shout out to Sazi for being a big part of this. Did you ever dream of finding a bug? <laughs> let me tell you, I have stories about this. Um, let me tell you that I have woken up thinking that, you know, I, I had a dream about a bug on Yahoo, for example. I go yeah. and chase it down. I don't let nothing go by me. Even if I dream of it, if I remember it, I am going to go try it out. You have to, dude. Your, your consciousness is telling you something and you have to go and chase it down. <laughs> I think yeah. it happens to all of us. I'm sure you have had a couple of experiences when you dream about getting an uh, RCE and you probably have to wake up and try it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. First thing. And, 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 uh, and sometimes you're like, Oh, it's going to go perfectly. And you're so overly confident because you, you kind of know it's there. And, and, and it fails and you're, you're just going to need to have another cup of coffee and be sad about it. And then you come back a couple of hours later. There she is. <laughs> Sounds good, man. This was great. Big thank you to everybody. Big thank you to Sean, Luke, uh, Donut, uh, Stasi. I think I've mentioned your name a couple of times and I've butchered it every time. Uh, big thank you to you guys for joining us. We'll do more of these, I think, every other week, maybe. Um, we want to do this. Send us questions, you know, send us uh, DMs, follow us on Twitter if you want to. I know there's a lot of questions about recon and about how to get started. This guy right here, Stoke, has a really good video on how to get started. Go look at this video. Um, send us questions. If you want us to talk about something, I, I know there's a lot of race condition questions coming up. I don't test for them, but maybe next time we do this, we can dedicate some time to it. Um, yeah, send us questions. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you want us to do. And uh, we'll be happy to host more of these. Woohoo! Have a great one. Take care and uh, stay epic.